Jennifer. Hi, Richard. How, How are you? you? I am doing fabulous. Thank you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. I've got some decorations here for us. <laughs> London. Yeah. I think I think that's a telly behind me. How are you doing? How's that? You know, we were taught we were debating whether to do it this week, and you did mention something which I felt was a spirit sort of idea that people a lot of people are suffering over the holidays as we know yeah. and anything that we can do to help people to connect to their loved ones is a value so why not right right um so tell me what's going on what's happening with you well let me do with a little somebody that i talked to yesterday before we go into that a uh, very dear friend of mine from chicago um, she told me, and you know, I forgot the fact that she actually interviewed a lot of, a lot of people in her, in her career. And one of them that she spoke of, she goes, you do know that when you and Richard were talking about Prince, the way that you were saying things about Prince is exactly what he would be saying about the water. And he goes, in fact, Dave Chappelle did a whole spoof on it. And I'm like, oh, that's funny because of Dave. <laughs> yeah. Read, I've read personally read Dave um, but it was just so funny because she's because I don't know I've never interviewed it's not it's just something that comes in and then I forget about it and then people tell me you know hey you talked to Prince but she said she goes he is totally like that every word you said is exactly what Prince would have said which I found interesting but it yeah. is it is because of course i mean i wrote you know for variety for a while when i wasn't directing movies and i did you know was backstage and did his concerts and stuff but i and i have a friend who was a friend of his but it it, it just it didn't compute and when he walked away from the industry i kind of went oh you know something's going on but after he passed and after he started showing up and talking to us i really focused on listening to his music i mean he's unbelievable everybody knows that but i was late to the party mm -hmm. that's just a way of saying it's not like you and i sit down would you show people your clipboard by the way do you have your clipboard always blank. it's blank okay because somebody wrote to me and was like yeah. she's got her notes on the clipboard and she's reading from there's the clipboard nothing, and there's anyway. nothing on the piece of paper there's a little this i always save paper so this says <laughs> outer, outer cleanse it has nothing else on there <laughs> there you go outer cleanse that's and what we nothing, all need there's nothing on any of the pages <laughs> but the I, would the, I would be the same way i never even thought about that really. and so and that's the next thought which is um, you know, sometimes we talk about something and then like a few hours later, I read about it online. So for example, last week, uh, we had that very unusual conversation with Elvis who came by and, uh, we asked him, how did he show up and why did he come by? You know, why did he show up in our class? And he mentioned John Lennon. And then we just had a little right. sidebar with John and we've spoken to him before and I'm friends with his son, Julian but we've had those conversations with him in the past. Um, right. I mean, I, I'll mention it that when I first met Julian, he was in a film of mine and I stayed at his house and uh, I had the weird experience of, you know, being up all night, having glasses of wine and stuff and sleeping on the couch. And then the voice of someone woke me up on his couch and I recognized the voice as his father saying, what the F are you doing here? And I heard the voice and I thought, I'm, this was years before, it was back in the 90s, way before any of this research. And I thought, well, that's so weird. I heard his father's voice wake me up this morning, but I couldn't tell it to him because I felt it was so, it was too odd. You know, I wasn't close enough to say that. And it took me years uh -oh. to finally tell him. You're stuck, Richard. I'm, I'm stuck. All right. What did I last say? Okay. Five, four. Richard. Hold on. Three. Two, one. All right, here we go. I didn't hear anything. So you were. How's that? Boink. Yep. Boink. So what did I last say? Uh, that was John telling me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, point of the story was that I heard John's voice, and and it wasn't until so many years later that we talked to him. Let's say, okay. And it's not that we're trying to sell anybody on that idea. However, he did mention in last week's session that he works with Paul. He said, 
yeah, I'm working with Paul. I mean, it's a logical thing to think, but we heard it here. And then a couple hours later, Paul dropped his third album and he was talking about how when he writes, he write, he feels John helping him write. Wow. I mean, it's that kind of a verification. Then also within that story, if you remember, we asked Elvis about his manager, uh, Colonel Tom Parker. Right. And, and he referred to him as like a partner in crime, somebody who they had both had checklists, checklists, and they checked off, you know, you're going to do this, I'm going to do this. Right. That night, Tom Hanks, or might have been earlier the night before, but Tom Hanks had been on talking about Colonel Parker because he's playing him in a movie with Baz Luhrmann. And he said he invited, he and his wife Rita invited uh, Priscilla over to their house. And she told him that their family loved Colonel Parker. They, they wished that he was still on the planet because he took care of them. Yeah. Those little details that you and I couldn't know right. are what's revealed here. And so this is what I'm trying to impart, which is as you, as people, and, and we're going to talk about that today, helping people uh, over here talk to their loved ones on the other side to set aside the disbelief hard to do you don't have to but to right. set it aside and focus on new information things that you didn't know that they revealed to you right. right so i mean one example is when my father passed away um i felt him wake me up tap me on the shoulder gave me a list of people he was with and and six names I'd never heard of before. And the next day I went to my mother and said, you know, I think dad stopped by last night. And I said, do you know who these people are? And she said, oh yeah, those are all our friends who died in World War II. Names I had never heard before that died 15 years before I was born, but that she knew. So you see that, that kind of new information, it can't be cryptomnesia or something I heard or thought or made up. So that's, that's just one thing to talk to people about. But remind us what Michael Newton or Morton said about helping people over there to access people over here. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, un unfortunately I do. Well, yes. Just to recount, Jennifer and I, when we met, five, six. I remember where it happened. Okay, it was uh, obviously it was at Fish Bar, and and I actually remember the booth. I think it's coming back now. Um, it had to do with the fact he was learning how to communicate. They're teaching people on the other side how to communicate with us from what we're doing. Exactly, and yeah. I had just met Jennifer. We had we had we had filmed that one three-hour interview where you and I had just met and part of me was going, is this real? Is this not real? And so many things that Jennifer said to me that she couldn't possibly know. About that, Amelia Earhart. Yeah, yeah, about Amelia Earhart, yeah. That new information. New that information, it's all in hacking the afterlife. But mm -hmm. at some point we were having lunch together and it might've been our first lunch. And you said, Morton is here. <laughs> and I looked at you like, who's Morton? And you said, that guy you made the documentary about. <laughs> I said, oh, you mean Michael Newton? An example of, you know, an empty clipboard. It's not like she wrote the guy's name down and said, I think I'll bring him up today. She got his name anyway. And so I was like, in my brain, I went, he's here? Like, they, I'm sure your clients do every day. Really? Are they, like, where are they? You're seeing right. him? And then he very specifically said he was working on helping people over there contact people here. And I was going on the George Nury Coast to Coast show that weekend. And I said, well, I'll be happy to pass along a message, but could you give us a one, two, three, so I can tell people listening into the radio show how they can talk to their loved ones on the other side. And he said, uh, number one, say their name. And I remember I asked you and I said, D does he mean say their name aloud or in your head? And you looked at me and said, it doesn't matter, Richard, which is the way he would have said it, which yeah. was unusual. It's not like you call me Richard every five minutes. Sometimes right. you do, when you're angry. <laughs> <Really>? and, <laughs> yeah. 
But the second thing he said was, just ask your questions. So once you've said their name, ask your questions. And I, like any half sane person said, well, how do you tell the difference? You know, whether you're making it up, the answers or not. Because you're not thinking it. He said, when you hear the answer before you can ask the question, you'll know you've made a connection. Now, since then, I've passed this along to many people and I've heard many, many people come back and say, it worked. But sometimes, as you and I have discussed here, and we'll talk about that, the answers aren't in the form of sound. Very hard to make those sound waves, but it might be an image. So hey. tell us about your images. How do you get images from the other side? Um, they just start showing them to me. So like, that's weird. They just showed me a big orange. <laughs> a big okay. orange. And it looked like it's out on the street. So it looks like a place of some sort. Anyways, so pictures come in, I don't discount it. Now we go and research why they showed me an orange. Yeah, did you, that you're saying right now. So when I saw the orange, I'm like, it's in the street, so it looks like a place. And then I'm like, we could ask. And the second I finished that, the second I said it, my grandfather popped in, which then I remembered, of course, like as soon as my grandfather popped in, he owned the Blue Goose, which sounds like a strip club, but it actually was a citrus company that turned into Sunkist in Arizona. Wow, orange. So orange represents your grandfather. Yeah, and I never put, I've never put that together. I've never, I wasn't thinking it. So it got shown to me and I'm like, that's so odd, right? Yeah. Well, so that's the way that they're saying, like, so I got that picture and then you can become your own little Richard Martini. And then you ask a question and it usually shows up, look, you know, you don't have to look anywhere. They just, they project pictures in your head. Thank so you. you're in your mind's eye, you're seeing something like an orange. And mm -hmm. instead of going, well, I, I don't know what that means. I, I haven't had orange juice in years. You right. just allow it and don't right. judge it. So it was so odd, but I know, especially when things are odd, there's always a point. Like I, I know because of what I do for work, not to judge it. You've actually taught me how not to judge things. Even though I'm probably the number one People don't understand this, but I'm like the biggest skeptic. A spirit will give me verbatim something to give to somebody and I'll fly. I'm like, no, no, well, that can't be. I can't say that, right. Okay. And it's always right, always. And eventually, if you don't, if you don't, um, hold on. If you don't listen or don't pay attention, they'll get tired of showing. You know, they won't, you won't, because you're already blocking it by not believing it. So every time you, you know, there's a couple of things. Thank you. <clears throat> when people are grieving, it creates, it's, when you're grieving, it's very challenging for spirit to show someone that's grieving. Not, it's not challenging for them to show up and show you something. It's challenging for you to listen to it. Receive it. Receive it. Cause you're so overwhelmed. Like when my dad passed, I wouldn't let anybody read me. I'm like, do not talk to me about my dad because I didn't want that band-aid to open up. I didn't want that hurt to come in. I was trying to control my hurt, which was idiotic to begin with. Well, your father came through during one of our sessions mm -hmm. very powerfully and I saw how emotional you were. And so I asked him because here I am with somebody who can actually <laughs> talk to the other side. I said, ask your father how we can help people with grief. And at the time he said, tell them to move grief to nostalgia. And I remember I said, what's that mean? And you said, I don't know. Right. And so I then followed that up with, well, let's ask him. He said it. And he said, gently, grief is sadness, only sad memories. Nostalgia contains both happy and sad memories. When you move grief to nostalgia, you begin the healing process. A unique perspective I've never heard before. Right. And, you know, because we've heard so many times grief is all encompassing. You never get over it, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, people have their own journey. But and I always tell people, I'm like, don't ever try to get over it. The best way to handle grief and from all the years I've been working with grief is to, is to know that you're not going to get over it 
but you'll learn to coexist with it. And so if you know that you're not going to get over it and you're going to have this be a part of your life, and sometimes it'll be heavy, sometimes it'll be laughter, just like you said with nostalgia, um, you, can, you can then know as well that you can still be happy and grieve. You could still be happy and still grieve at the same time. Then there's this other element, which is what you're doing and what we're doing, which is um, once you become aware, let's say on a research level or on a personal level, an experience, you do a hypnotherapy session, perhaps, you meet someone like Jennifer, you do a session, and you get just a nugget of reality passed to you, something that Jennifer couldn't know, only your loved one could know. Your brain is going, how could that possibly be? But it's now the nugget that's inside your little pocket of information. And if you allow that to grow, you eventually get to a point where you realize if they still exist, if they could pass that information along, then I must not know what's going on. Because if they still exist, that means they still exist. So here's what I tell people to do. Take out a photograph of your loved one that you want to talk to. Look at that. Meditate on it. Picture them sitting across from you just the way Jennifer is now. Just imagine your loved one sitting there. And as you're looking at your loved one, start looking at the color of their eyes, the color of their hair. Look at what they're wearing and try to say to yourself, do I know that? Is that something I would know or is that something they know? It's a way to allow them to dress however they want. Then you reach over and take hold of their hands. In your mind's eye, it's a game. Pretend it's a game. Why not? You hold their hands. Are they soft? Are they cold? Are they warm? Are they tender? Are they hard? Whatever they are, just allow that to be. But remind yourself how they felt. And then ask them a specific question. Jennifer, is this you? And they may do that. If they nod, then you know you've made a connection, you see? And now ask a question they don't know the answer to. That, I'm sorry, that you don't know the answer to. You couldn't know. You ask them, who was there to greet you when you crossed over? It's a non-denominational question. You're not asking about the meaning of life. You're not asking about lottery numbers. You're just asking. Right. Am I getting married? <laughs> yeah. Am I going to get married? Should I dump this guy? It's all about, usually those questions are about yourself. Hello. But if you ask them a question about their journey, who was there to greet you? That's where it gets interesting because an image pops into your mind and your mind goes, really? I don't believe that. Don't right. judge the answer and go from there. And eventually you're going to get to a question like, what's your favorite food? Or what do you miss about being on the planet? And before you can ask the question, what do you, you get the image in your head. And that's how they can answer the question before you've asked it. Does that make sense? Okay, nobody wants to hear me talk. Well, we've only got, well, we have a little bit of time. So Lou, let's ask Luana, our pal on the flip side to come forward. Is there anybody that we need to speak to? I want, I want I want to say one more thing. Go ahead. Another thing is psychometry. It's getting something of theirs, whether it's a watch or like I wear my dad's ring when I work. Um, it's something that you know, a piece of clothing, a, like just like a picture, I guess it's the same. But then you have something that's tangible that has their energy on it, and that's it. It's not necessarily an easier connection but you'll, you will feel like it's an easier connection. It's almost like their frequency, whatever that is, is there and remains there. Yeah. You know how when you look at your dad's watch or, or your mom's something that she had in her room, you immediately you can see her holding it. They showed me it's like a tug because your heart thinks of them. And so it tugs on them. It's that telephone line that gets to them. So that's our advice, which is you want to speak to someone on the flip side. And this is Jennifer gave this to me from Michael Newton. And it's those three simple things to do and keep doing, keep trying. I think it's worth it. You know, yeah. I tell people, speak of your loved one in present tense. Oh, when, they get mad at me when I don't. And when it's, you know, holidays, Christmas time, set them a table, set them a dish, 
<laughs> you know, put out a drink for them. And when it comes time to toast them and you go with around the table, what you're grateful for, say their name. Talk about who they were and who they are and, and ask them to help you in front of everybody else. And they'll go, what's wrong with, did you had too much to drink? <laughs> Whatever. Okay. So Lulu, Luana, Anders, our friend on the flip side who moderates our class. Um, I know I asked you last night if there was anybody that we needed to talk to. And you did tell me somebody. And I, well, I do feel your mother. Oh, hi, mom. Merry Christmas. She's saying Merry, happy holiday. Merry Christmas. She's I've, also saying, she's showing me some food. Like there's a dish that you need to do. <laughs> yeah, like I need more food. Um, oh, that's sweet. I love that. Uh, no, I got a call from my brother yesterday and I thought, oh, my mom that must is, have. It's a side dish of some sort. So, oh, I am a side, you're a side dish. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> well, I was going to say, I found a whole stack, I mean, a, a hard drive filled with uh, videos of my mom playing concert piano, which I was going to put online. And I thought, oh, yeah. this will be fun. I'll give this to my you know, family for Christmas. Anthy, A-N-T-H-Y, martini.com. You can see my mom playing concert piano in my living room. It's fun. But Lou... When I asked you that question, who should we talk to tomorrow? I got the sense that you said you should talk to me. Now, did, were you joking <laughs> or? Oh my gosh, that's so funny. So I thought it like, she wasn't joking, but I, you know, Luana to me is kind of like your mother at times. <laughs> <laughs> well. So that was kind of funny, but um, yeah, hold on. She says to do more of this work it's kind of the same thing I've been, we've been talking about. Do more of this work with individuals. With individuals. Okay. You know, um, and for the listeners out there, how could, how could, if they wanted a session with you, how could they get a hold of you? <laughs> well, I tell people martini prods, like P R O D S uh, at Gmail. They can always email me. Um, and what we're referring to is Jennifer had uh, somebody that came to her and, and she recommended me in this kind of unusual thing that I do where I help people access the flip side without hypnosis. It's the whole bulk of the book, Architecture of the Afterlife. But I, I was going to say, I, Jennifer and I were talking about this before where I was saying, I'm in these councils and I'm talking to these really wise people about the planet and about what we should do. And I always ask, is it okay what I'm doing? You know, this research, talking to councils. And I hear it now more and more, like it's really important. And this, this one session I did the other day, this woman's lead council person said uh, something along the lines, and I'll, I'll put it in a blog, but it was like the fate of humanity rests on this information. And I kind of tried to mitigate that. Like, what do you mean? And he was saying, opening up consciousness is the only way to save your planet, which is, a, you know, it's our planet, of course. You know, we're all part of the same thing. But he was trying to say, the last thing he said, I, I'll note, was just be kind. That was the last thing he said. But within that, he was saying, this research, talking to your loved ones, helps you to realize that we do come back here, that we can come back here, and that we need to leave behind fresh water, fresh air, and fresh earth, not only for our children, but for right. our own return. Right. It, so I think that's what he meant in the context of we have to become aware of how consciousness works, how incarnation works, how we bring a certain amount of consciousness, et cetera, et cetera. And people like Jennifer can access that consciousness. She can converse with somebody's higher self. We've done this here with people with dementia. Yes. You know, where a friend of mine's father was in the hospital, in hospice care, and, you know, pretty much out of it. 
but because I knew him so well, I was, I asked Jennifer without telling her who we were going to talk to. I just said, I want to talk to my friend's father, Jack. And Jack came through clear as a bell, talked about me as a kid, his observations of me, talked about his dog, you know, details that only he could know. And then I asked, I said, so how much of you percentage wise is here, you know, waiting to go over? And he said about 10%, which is kind of the number we've heard. Right. And so, so for those who have family members that are suffering from dementia, that's another thing to be aware of in this research, which is 90% of them is already home. Right. I never feel sorry for people that have dementia. I feel sorry for their caregivers. Yeah. And because I was talking to somebody yesterday, a friend of Luana's, which I thought, well, this is funny. She called me out of the blue and she's gotten to a point where she can't really finish a sentence. She starts the sentence full steam ahead and then it kind of falls apart, but which didn't stop me from teasing her and having laughs. And, and I said, look, it doesn't matter to me that you remember what the story is or who I am. I remember who you were. I remember who, what you meant to so many people. So it's the least I can do to make you enjoy whatever it is we're talking about. Right. Anyway, that, I, enough about me. Lou, <laughs> back to you. You know who I'm talking about, our friend Sally. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's here most of the time, she says. She's up there. There you go. That's my point. Yeah. Um, Luana says that everybody hears the people that, you know, your loved ones do hear you. So the people that are grieving, especially if this, especially with how many people have died in the world, the people that are grieving for their loved ones, the people that have unsettled feelings because maybe they didn't get to be with them in the hospital. Maybe they, you know, for whatever reason or however they passed, I should say, they are listening. And even if you're grieving, like we've talked about, you know, try to connect with them because they will give you pictures. You know, I didn't expect my that grandfather. That grandfather rarely comes through. And the fact he came through with an orange to use it as a demonstration was brilliant, right? Right, because it's unique. And then, of course, what I have to quit doing is like, okay, is my mom okay? Like, why are you here? Like, that's where I go, which ruins the experience, you know. They'll tell you. But I just always think like something's something's wrong. Something's wrong if he's here, you know. So that's another thing. Don't do. Um, they're not always here to tell you things. You know what's going on. What's wrong? Um, show me again. Hold on. They do say that you've been. They're like Richard has been talking a lot to us, <laughs> and we've been helping. And we hear what you have to say. And we wish we could write and do this. We wish we could write for you. You're, you're channeling, right? But they wish that they, they know you. They know I'm getting it wrong. <laughs> no, they, uh, there's not, they just showed me like 10 of you. You need like 10 of you. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, I need to magnify the, the uh, message. Well, let me ask you, uh, Lou, what am I saying wrong? Or what am I doing wrong? I mean, I, you know, I'm not trying to beat myself up, but of course I can be doing things wrong and saying things wrong. And if there's something you guys want to correct me with, please let me know. It's not correcting. They just want you to do more. That's why they need 10 of you. I see. No, I, you brought so many people into talking to them on the other side. Yeah, no, and I've uh, I heard it recently via somebody that we both know who gave me a message from somebody on the flip side who said, "Get to work, get your head out of your," and uh, you know it was li literally like you know trying to kick me around the room, and I and my thing was like, "Come on, you got to help me from over there." It's not I can knock on a lot of doors, but if the door doesn't they said, open, they said that it would it's going to be helpful for you to do individual appointments. Like to take to offer that, okay. Offer that, okay. And what Jennifer's referring to again, if if you look at the book Architecture of the Afterlife, and you 
and you think, oh, I can do that. I, I think it's helpful with somebody who's had a strong a dream or a vision of like, you know, they had a dream where they saw their mother. And it, what I do is I try to walk into that memory and that's where we anchor our way into the flip side. I use the memory Got because it. only they have it. I can't see it, but they can. And it, and it helps that frequency adjustment helps because you have somebody there. They, okay, hold on. Okay, I guess that is a memory. So yeah, it's whatever, it's a memory that they have from here. Is there anything I should add to that method, which I obviously got from you guys? Don't get frustrated with the process. <laughs> Give the person enough time to go through it or to, to say what they're saying. Or yeah. Well, I've also, I've started to say this phrase, which I think is helpful. Think of it as a game. We've right. all played mind games before. Don't right. think of it as like, I'm talking to my mom or I'm talking to my dad. Cause that's too much emotion associated with that. I want to speak to my father. Okay. Let's play this game. It's called talking to your dad. And now you're going to pretend pretend that dad's sitting across from you and you're going to pretend that he's wearing whatever clothes he's wearing and you're going to pretend that he can reply he doesn't have to speak by voice because right. sometimes they can't because they have to adjust their frequency to you i'm doing right. this hand because it's a wave you know whoa ask him a question and if he can do this that's you've got an answer if he does this that's also an answer if he does this it's an answer even nothing is an answer. You know, will you tell me the lottery numbers? And we're nothing. <laughs> you see, so it's a game. And if you allow it to be a game, then you play with the rules. And to win the game, that's when you ask, you start to ask a question and you hear the answer before. And this happens with Jennifer and me often, where I start a sentence, so what? And you go, Bep. and I go, oh, right. It's not that she's reading my mind. I guess you could argue that, but it's it's more that she's hearing the answer from the person who's outside of time who can anticipate what I'm about to ask. Right, right. It's quantum mechanics brought to life. They just showed me proof of heaven. What you're doing is another validation of heaven. Well, there's also that book. Do they mean the book by... Even Alexander? Alexander. You're doing it a different way from a proof that they can, that's more attainable for them. So, and I like to point out to people that even Alexander's book, A Proof of Heaven, that was an editor's idea for a title, not his. He's a scientist. But a proof is what you do when you argue your dissertation. You make a proof. You you bring all the elements together and you make this argument. So a proof of heaven. And Jennifer just said the word a proof. So my version is is we're doing these, this is research into the flip side, how to talk to it, how to access it, right, how to learn from it. And especially around these holidays, they're saying they do hear us. They've said it over and over. So they do hear what we have to say. They why are is that? Why is that? Because everyone's together or everyone's thinking about them or why is it more in the holidays? There's more memories created in the holidays. So every day, you don't remember like everyday stuff, but you'll remember, you know, what you did for Christmas or what trip you went on or what you received for Christmas. That would be a memory. Like I just was shown my roller skates that I got from my grandmother, <laughs> my father. You know, they were white with blue. And so you get, you, um, they're easier to access. Memories are easier to access. And so they'll be able to like, so that wasn't, a, that wasn't an answer to your question. It's easier for them to show something that you, um, that's in your memory bank. How would, Hold on. Honey. All right. Well, we, you know what, but this gives us a chance to say, to wrap it up. So we are having Wi-Fi problems. We want to wish everybody out there a merry, happy homina.
Jennifer, over to you. And maybe Luana wants to say something. Try doing this, some of the things that we've said, the one, two, threes, and then be patient with the answers and with the pictures. And if you start thinking about a loved one, like I just thought, like I just thought about my dad and I got, he just showed me a picture of my mind's eye, my ring. You know, it can happen just like, you know, just as fast, but you have to be really open to receiving the messages. And some people are like, I don't see anything. You have to think really hard not to see anything. <laughs> you really do, you know. Um, oh, Luana says she loves you, Rich. Richard. She Thank you, Lou. You. We love you. I love you. We love you. <laughs> Sherry. Sherry loves you. My kids love you. They all saw you after you checked off the planet. So. Oh, did you get her? Did you give, are you giving her what you thought? There was something with it that was very sweet. They're just showing me like something. They're opening up something. And I don't know what it is. A gift. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, Here's my wrapping paper. I'm just, all I got to do is wrap it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hold on. And they don't be too hard. Like, don't be just like everybody. Like, don't be hard on yourselves. You guys, we have our bodies. We are not, you know, I'm sorry if some people are sick, but if you're not sick, be grateful that you're not sick. Be grateful that your children are healthy. Um, try to celebrate. Try it. Yeah. Try it. You can either folk. Thank you. You can either focus on the news and everything else that's going wrong in the world, or you can turn that off. Listen to some great music they're sh sharing with me. M music has tons of me memories in inside of that, you know. Um, that will bring through your loved ones. They love the music, you know, they love listening to music. And know the world is not ending. <laughs> just as yet, just of yet, I guess. Um, <laughs> pay attention to signs that tell you maybe you shouldn't go somewhere or maybe you shouldn't do that. You know, um, they're trying, they're trying to keep everybody safe. Yeah. And, you know, they do put stuff in your mind to go, oh, I don't think I should do that today. Listen to your instincts and, and remember that there is no such thing as coincidence. What you think is coincidence is people on the flip side putting stuff together in a very elaborate puzzle. So yeah. this is an elaborate puzzle for us. I'm sorry that our Wi-Fi keeps jumping around, but you know what? It's up to them, right? On some level. And we love you guys and we'll catch you in the are we gonna am I gonna see you next week or in the new year? I kind of want to do it next week too. Should we okay. try? Okay, very good. We should. Lou. Thank you for orchestrating all this, putting yeah. us together in this kind of unusual way. I know I was thinking about it last night, just this, the, the connections are just so unusual and how we can stay, be connected, even though you were, you checked out the planet 30 years ago and we met, you know, I don't know how many years ago, who knows, at least in this lifetime. Yeah, I researched 31. 31, there you go, which is a blip over there. It's nothing, it's like two minutes ago. Anyway, we love you guys. And Jim, thank you for bringing your daughter to the planet. And we appreciate her immensely. And we love it when you show up. And I just wanted to make sure we acknowledge you. And Merry Christmas to you, sir. Thanks for coming in. Bye. We love you. Okay, bye, Jennifer. We'll see you next week. Merry Christmas. Bye. This has been Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. For more information, jenniferschafer.com, martinizone.com, or richmartini.com. Hacking the Afterlife documentary is available on Gaia.com via Amazon Prime.